Assalamu alaikum everyone. We are back with another interview with one of our heroes of New York. Uh, today we have Muhammad Liajil Hassan, who is one of the founders of Muskir. Uh, it's an organization in New York that is helping people for their food, water, education, and clothes across the globe. Uh, the Muskir has a very good idea of how you can donate, and we will talk to Liajil Hassan for that. Uh, thank you, brother, for joining me. How are you doing? Thank you for having me, Alhamdulillah. But I'm no hero, so thanks for the intro. But just one of the guys. Yes. Okay, so so please tell me about you and uh, where do you live and what do you do exactly? So I live in uh, Queens. I would say that's the bur best borough of New York City. So I live here. I grew up in Brooklyn, but then I moved to Queens. I've been a PA, so it's a physician assistant. Uh, Almost like a doctor, not exactly. You have to work under a doctor. But alhamdulillah, I've been doing this for about five years now. And, and what about this muskir? Uh, it has a very good concept of uh, donated dollar. Can you tell us more about that and overall about uh, this muskir organization? Yes, yeah, so we actually started off as a Facebook group. Uh, first, it was the Musni group or MusNY. It was a jobs group on Facebook. Alhamdulillah. Within a week, Alhamdulillah, it's all from Allah. It, it grew to like a, at least a thousand members and then slowly just, well, not slowly, quickly, it just grew and grew. Alhamdulillah, you know, like we realized that we have a huge group. It can't just be for jobs anymore. We created another groups for everything miscellaneous, whether it's for volunteering, um, buying and selling, whatever. So we created the Muscare group after a few name changes and then sure. realized that we have the potential to do even more than that. There's so many causes, so many people that need help. We see posts of people, you know, needing help locally all the time. So why not take the next big step and become an official nonprofit organization? So, yeah, we decided to do that. Alhamdulillah, it was about, it's been around three years, I believe a little more than that. Um, so the Donate a Dollar project is basically one of our main projects. That's one of the stuff we did from the very beginning. Um, it's basically... We try to raise as many monthly donors uh, donations as possible from as many people as possible. I believe there's about a hundred thousand Muslims. I mean, plus uh, that just you know, uh, uh, low estimate of the number of Muslims in New York City. And our idea is, if every single person can give a dollar or five dollars, there would never be a person in need. If everyone gives that much amount every single month, we can do so much. So we just started off with that. Our first month, I think we just raised a monthly donation of like two hundred seventy dollars. And now, alhamdulillah, we have almost like $4,000 a month. And every single month, we're trying to find causes, trying to help people in need. So, so your main focus is to help the Muslims in New York or um, outside? That's Italy? our main focus. Yeah. Yeah, so that's our main focus. But, you know, we've uh, always been looking. Um, we always email our monthly donors saying that, hey, if you know someone in another country, regardless of where, as long as we can verify it, we're willing to help. Uh, we've done a few projects throughout the country, uh, throughout the globe. Alhamdulillah, several um, in Bangladesh, Pakistan. We even um, raised some funds recently for um, a poor village in Mexico. Um, we've raised uh, donations for people of Yemen. Um, yeah, and uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, recently our <clears throat> with our donations, uh, people, uh, you know, our members donating, we've actually opened. Uh, Islamic school uh, slash like elementary school in Nigeria. Nice. So nice. wherever we can help. So, so it, it's still going on with that, uh, that money that you, you're working on those on that school. Or, or uh, was so it that just school, one, just... one time of one time project? So we actually got to know one of the main imams of the, uh, of the village. And we start off by raising funds for wells in the village. And then from there, he's like, you know, we could really build a school there, help uh, make a difference. So we raised funds for that. And then, you know, here and there, there's like uh, more funds that be, that are needed, whether it's for like, you know, school supplies, uh, uh, like desks, tables, et cetera. So I'm sure they're going to have more expenses as time comes. And I mean, you know, that's a very poor village. So if more funds are needed, we'll start that to fundraisers. Sure. So, so how, how does it happen, this donation process, uh, how people donate uh, to this must care um, monthly, especially, do they have any kind of process or anything do you have in place? Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, we just request them to go to our website, honestly. It's uh, muscare.org, M-U-S-C-A-R-E.org. Um, and yeah, you just follow the directions. It's very straightforward. Um, you just follow the directions, however much you want to give. We also, in, in New York especially, we have like, let's say, Zelle or QuickPay, where you could set a monthly donation just straight from your bank account, send it to our email or our phone number. Uh, yeah, our email. I mean, it's really as straightforward as that. And what I always, we try to always emphasize to people is like, hey, just set it up. Even if it's a few dollars, you can always make changes later. Whether things, you know, unfortunately change in your life that you need to cancel, cancel it. Um, whether you want to raise the amount later or decrease it, that's absolutely fine. Just set it up. And that's the beauty of, you know, like uh, something like this is we have had people for like three years, right? Like they set up like $5, $10, some people, $50, $100, Alhamdulillah. They never had to do work since they just set up that donation three years ago. Um, they're still getting the blessings of every single uh, people we're helping without them lifting a single finger. And then they get the emails every single month, us telling them where their money went. I believe, you know, that's a beautiful thing. That's great. So so what's the goal of Muscare in this year, 2021? Do you 2021... want to new projects and uh, more funding obviously but what's is there anything special you want to focus on well to look at 2021 we kind of had to look at 2020 um right before covid became uh, intense with the lockdowns we we're actually trying to do a career fair um with another organization um you know we we one thing we like is we don't have a very uh, we don't focus on like just one specific thing so we don't just stop at our monthly donations we try to do events. So we've had a few events, talks with barbecues, uh, whatever we can do to help. Um, so inshallah, you know, with 2021, inshallah, the coronavirus, um, you know, the, the situation gets better. So maybe we could do another career event. We would love to do our yearly barbecues. We reverse dinners, more projects too. You know, inshallah, one day we go to the point where uh, we have our, a location of our own where we could have an office or a masjid or setting where that's our center, you know, that's where we can do activities, host events and go from there. Sure. Um, right. So uh, I believe you, there are more people with you uh, on Muscares. Can you tell us about those people and how they help you with that? Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's not just me. Um, I have, uh, we have a few other admins. Um, there's Ikra, there's Kazi, there's Samuel, there's Radhra, there's Rahila. Um, those are our main core uh, admin members. And we we always also, you know, ask for volunteer help. They've been helpful and there's like way too many people to count. There's been people in the back that has always supported her from day one. But one of the things we uh, always emphasize and without making it sound prideful is we don't take a single penny from all the work we do. Um, you know, we all have our full-time jobs. Well, most of us. Um, vast majority of us, we all have our full-time jobs. We all have, you know, our hobbies, the things we need to do. This is all on the side. And people, you know, they don't realize like managing a Facebook group takes a lot of time. We don't just approve every single post, then that would save a lot of time for us. We monitor the group, uh, the post to make sure there's good quality. It's not just random spam thrown all over. We have to approve like 30 to 60 posts uh, every single day. Um, it's each group has um, about 20,000 members. So that takes time, but you know, it's all for a lot, you know, nothing to be um, have pride over, but yeah, everyone's helping. It's not just me. Yeah. And, and that was my exactly next question about the motivation. Where does it come from? And uh, mashallah, you have a good team. Uh, so how, how, how you guys stay motivated? Motivation is something you always got to have, uh, whether it's me or, you know, the other admins, wherever, even like with the, the uh, growing up, wanting to try like businesses on the side, you always got to find motivation to keep going. Anyone can have a nice idea, stay motivated, energetic for a day, a, a few weeks or even a month or so. And then it just dies out. Um, true success takes a lot of time. Um, you look at any successful business stories, uh, big companies, they start off you know, doing really, really bad. It takes a year, maybe even a few years, and then something just works. You know, you just got to keep it going. And our motivation, it's its cheesy, but it's its its a fundamental. It's us doing it for the sake of Allah, you know. Um, there's a lot of stuff, obviously, we could improve on, work on, 
Um, we always take uh, suggestions, but at the end of the day, Allah made Facebook, uh, these Facebook groups grow over a few days so fast. It was not from me or anyone else. It was all from Allah and just the whole community of New York just buying into these ideas that, hey, these groups could be so beneficial. And then we made it a nonprofit. So it's it feels like, you know, Allah gave us this task to do that, you know, we hope we just keep doing a good, a good job or hope we are doing a good job. Great. And uh, since I follow you on social media, you are also very active in talking about the social issues, uh, especially in the U.S. So, so can you tell me what kind of issues you face um, in the U.S. and maybe what kind of criticism you get from the Muslims uh, over there? Uh, in terms of social issues, I mean, there's too many to count, you know. Um, growing up, you don't realize some of these issues and then... A lot of people, they just stay blind to it or they just stay into the small little cliques they're part of. They don't really see what's going on in the big picture. I mean, anyone with us, would ha one of the, their eyes open would realize the issues of racism in this country that has started from the beginning of this country's foundation, you know, uh, the beginning of this country's start. Um, the racism that is deeply rooted in the government, in society, that's one of the main things behind, you know, the recent... Uh, Black Lives Matter movements. Um, you know, that's one of the main things we try to be a part of. Uh, I mean, uh, well, not not saying we try to be a part of, but it's as being a, a Muslim, you can't have racism in your beliefs. You cannot think that any other person based on their color is better than the other person. And I try to be vocal. Uh, and sometimes I maybe I talk too much, but I believe like you can't stay quiet on these things. Like, yeah, people say there's like all these negative zones of social media, Facebook, Instagram, whatever. But at the same time, like you, you have your friends, you have a platform where you can say some stuff. Maybe one person in your friends list is going to look at your post. Maybe they'll open their eyes. Um, you got to say something, you know, if, if you don't, um, if you, if you see injustice, you know, as Islam, it's as in as Islam, you try to change it with your hands. If not, change it with your mouth. If not, at least hate it so i mean you know at least dislike it with your heart so you can't stay quiet on these things unfortunately and a lot of people they're too passive i believe and uh, I'm, uh, of course like when you talk you have to talk with manners and whatnot but you should talk yeah yeah right so thank you very much for your time muhammad uh, stay blessed and inshallah we will meet soon inshallah take care Salam.